This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, therapy has helped many of my friends and family. There is no need to feel bad or ashamed about going to therapy. Getting help is a part of the journey, and that's what BetterHelp does. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help you. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work. Or you just have a lot on your plate. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. Right now is a special offer to my listeners, Lay Your Brick listeners. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. That's betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Lay Your Brick. This episode, I had the pleasure to sit down with Lucas Cullen. Lucas shares his mental health struggles and journey. We talk about his podcast called Struggle Creates Strength. Across all his platforms, he creates a space of realism and comfortability and vulnerability when talking about mental health. We talk about ways to heal, motivation, stuff that helped him keep going, and stuff that can help you guys keep going. When I say that Lucas has a blessed soul, he really does. Everything that he says is coming from a space of experience and comfortability. So please pay attention, actively listen, and I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get straight into it. Well, no, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you spending your time with me. Um, you know, Lucas and I were just talking about how I kind of came across and stumbled in, on him. And uh, so first off, I mean, you have you have that podcast and the podcast is called Struggle Creates Strength. So and I I really love it because the episodes that you have are just. They're so pure, right? Like they're just really really like you can resonate with them and they're so deep and Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think like and vulnerable like that's one of the Mm -hmm. big words that you used and I Mm -hmm. I really like that a lot so I wanted to kind of from the very beginning I wanted to learn more about you so like why did you kind of obviously you're at a point in your life which we'll get to where in Europe and Indonesia and all that so it's like where did all this come from like when you were younger what were you going through? Cause we, we talked about this. So you're a big mental health advocate. Mm-hmm. So let's dive into that. What was your lifestyle like that then? Yeah, absolutely. So I, my story, I guess is like similar to some different than, than most, I guess. And honestly, like ever since I was young, like quite young, I was about 14 when I really started to encounter like severe depression encountering all forms of anxiety. Like I had an abundance of friends yet still always felt super alone would like isolate myself at lunch times in school at like grade nine. And, um, I started like encountering friends that were going through or, like one particular friend that ended up like, it was like kind of a tragic event, I would say, but he ended up reaching out to me, um, essentially like using me as a form of a resource, but also a way to kind of like, I don't want to say like take advantage, but almost in the sense of uh, like sending me pictures saying he was going to like kill himself and like going through that whole rabbit hole. And I think that really like shifted my brain in a lot of different ways. And I started to not really understand um, how to like cope with my own struggles and what to do. And I almost got like fearful of like ever getting into that standpoint as well. And I think over time, just like all of these feelings, all these thoughts, all of the depression and the anxiety all just bottled up into one. And I just started to really isolate myself. And then even leaning into like grade 10, um, when like most kids are like, yeah, start of high school, at least like back in Canada, it's like start of high school, grade 10. This is great. We're, uh, we're starting the next big chapter. And it's like, this is the final years of school. Um, And for me, it was more so battling like 
internal depression, anxiety, trying to like keep it from everyone. Cause I was again, like a very well-liked person, had a lot of friends, um, felt very ashamed of my struggles. I was also at that time, like utilizing self-harm, uh, that became like one of my biggest coping mechanisms for, for years, honestly. And it really just like translated into kind of like a big shit show of, of struggles over, over the course of years. And there was like multiple times from even like grade 11, 12, where like, honestly, really just like sit there contemplating on taking my own life, did that several times. Um, and again, just kept using self harm. And there was always times in those moments when I was like, I really want to do something with mental health. Like when I get out of this state, if I get out of this state, I really want to do something with mental health. And I remember like vividly, like even as I'm saying this, I can like see it in my bathroom. I would like would walk around in my bathroom, like just being like, I want to do something with mental health. If I ever get out of this, like I want to do something with mental health. And that was really just something that always like stuck with me. And um, when I was 20 was when everything really, it was kind of like, I don't know, like this is the worst analogy ever, but like well, the worst metaphor ever, but like the last supper. And that's all I'm going to say okay. is because it okay. was like the last straw essentially. And I, um, yeah, it was just like in a very unwell place. I, um, I'd like been through a lot that year and I, we like recently lost a, a really close family friend of ours and was just like turning to alcohol as a coping mechanism was not in a proper headspace at all to like deal with my own my own struggles and um I remember even like at that time too I was, I was still playing hockey and I would like go out drinking the night before till like 3 4 a.m show up at for our like pre-game skate at like 9 a.m just like still feeling full effects of all the alcohol from the night before wouldn't nap before the game um just like was really just putting myself into these very terrible situations and um yeah eventually it just got like way too much and just everything from life became too much and one night I just remember like leaving my house um leaving my house and just being like never gonna be back here again and that was like my my mission was like I am essentially just going to like take my own life tonight. And that's like the end of it. Um, obviously that wasn't the case and I'm still sitting here today. And uh, after like trip to the hospital and everything like that, um, it was like in that moment and like through like, honestly, like the embarrassment of even like being in the hospital. And I'm not saying like it's ever a thing to be ashamed of, of like being in that situation. Cause obviously like it's a very, very scary situation. And it's not one that I ever wish upon anyone. But um, in those moments, again, it's like the things that feed me to do what I do now is because it's like, of course, like nobody should ever be ashamed of like anything that they've ever gone through or what they are going through. But in those moments, it's like, that's the things that, especially for me, anytime I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just like go do something that doesn't involve mental health. And then I like think back to those moments. And I'm like, that's literally not possible because I feel like this now is like my job as a person that has a voice and is able to speak about my struggles and is able to be very open with them to actually speak about them. And that's really what stemmed the whole podcast and stemmed like the vulnerable conversations, the raw, the real, never changing anyone's stories, just like allowing people to really like share their stories in that full depth and just like, again, have that safe space. And now like with everything that I ever try and do, like that's the whole purpose. And even for like myself too, it's like, I never want to restrict my own voice or restrict my own being for, for anyone or anything. Cause like, again, I think it's, it's awesome to be able to, to be who you are anytime that you can. Hopefully that answered your question. I just, no idea. No, yeah, dude, it totally did. No, I, I appreciate you saying all that and, and going into depth on that because, you know, I want to go back to that mirror moment, like, because I think those are such crucial points because I think the main message, which you definitely portray on Instagram and, and all the platforms that you have mm -hmm. is like, you're not alone. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we're in those times, like we feel like it's like you said, like you felt like, ashamed and we felt 
like like you didn't want to tell other people because like we have friends and we're you know supposed to be happy you know quotation marks around other people and so Mm -hmm. it's a very hard thing but that moment in the mirror like what so obviously all this mental health stuff drove you there but like did it feel like a switch in your head like went off and you're like i can't like because that's really cool that you were you were still in the trenches you were still in it and you're like when i get out of this or if i get out of this like i want to help other people like i want to be able to spread my word so what like yeah describe that moment i guess more in depth yeah i it was like one of those i guess you would call it kind of like the aha moment Mm -hmm. where you really you really are just like in the thick of things and for me especially i like have always been like a very like determined person and i guess like a problem solver and i'm like this is happening to me. Like, I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to do this. And like, kind of like my own little hype up person, essentially. Um, But through those struggles, there was a lot of times when it wasn't that way. Like I wasn't hyping myself up, getting myself motivated. It was more so like being down on myself, getting hard on myself. And I think it was, I just like reached a point where I guess like you can almost even say it was like frustration, um, frustration with the feelings I was feeling. And essentially I was just like, finally got to this point where it was like, turn frustration, uh, into motivation. And essentially I just like sat there and I was like, literally like enough is enough. Like, I hate this feeling. I hate what's happening. Um, obviously like I might not be able to change this right in this very moment, but like whatever happens, I know for a fact that like, I will do something that is going to help other people when they're feeling this way. And I know like for me now, like some of my biggest goals, um, even though of course, like you always move your goals around a little bit, (laughs) you change Mm -hmm. them given like life circumstances and, and new things come in and uh, everything like that. But my, my life goals have always been to like speak in front of large audiences, um, deliver like my story to people and like, really just use my story and these bits and pieces to actually just like, again, resonate and touch other people's lives. Cause same as like your story and my story and anyone else's, it's like, we always have little bits and pieces that can really like resonate to people. And it's like, we're all living this crazy life and we're all going Mm -hmm. about our days and we all have this whole internal dialogue that's happening. And it's like, I guarantee you some of the things that I've thought you've thought too. And Like in these moments, uh, especially like that one where I had that big aha moment, it was like, I really just want to be able to, to help people so that no matter what, like if there's another 15 year old kid that's sitting in the same position, it's like, he, he knows that he's not alone. And I think that's, again, a huge driving force for me to, to try and accomplish all these things and also like go to all these crazy places and do all these crazy things in life. Cause I want people to see like, where I once was and where I am now and see that it's actually like attainable. And it's not just like somebody was like, here you go. Here's like life on a platter. It's like, no, that hasn't been the case at all. This is like a life that you can actually just like create. And it sounds super cliche to say that, but it's, it's very, very true. And that's why I like to, again, use like those struggling moments and like really use those as that foundation. So people can see like, the basically like the then and the now which is obviously super good that's a huge thing i think one thing that like i you know realized when you were telling those stories and talking about it was i mean a how well it will resonate with other people i really do i think that it you know does and and will continue and also how genuine you genuinely you are because Mm -hmm. at at like one of your lowest points, you were so selfless. Like you, like you wanted to help other people. That's a huge, like that just blows my mind because it's like, (laughs) it's a good thing though. Like, I mean, I just don't think that, and I, and I'm sure there's other people out there like that for sure. But I think it's really cool to be able to sit down and talk to somebody like that, because that is when at those times, you know, which I know, you know, like you said, it's a, it's a roller coaster, right? It's not a mm-hmm. constant, either you're motivated or you're not. It's just a, and so it's just really interesting to me because it's like at the lowest point you were selfless and you were like, look, I really want to help other people so they don't have to feel like this, which is just, 
I applaud you. Like I, I, <laughs> I really do. I appreciate that. So when you were going through all the stuff that you went through in that early age from your 14 to 15, whatever it was, 20, mm -hmm. like, was there anybody that you were surrounded by that, that helped you like influenced you like just in general family friends yeah yeah it um there was for sure like there of course like in those moments when even like now as i look back i'm like no i'm solely alone like it was all me just me in that in that yeah. moment but that is not the case at all like i know um it's really tough actually. Like when I, especially when I look back on it, cause I'm like, you know what? Like there was so many people that actually were there helping doing their best. And I think that's one of the things is cause, um, and it's so bad to say this, but sometimes like people's best, like just simply aren't enough and they don't mm -hmm. like fully understand. And that was one of the biggest things that I kept running into is like, I was like, yeah, you know what? Like you're obviously helping, but like you're not helping and you're not doing anything productive for me. And so then I would like shut those people out entirely mm -hmm. and just be like, it's just me, it's all me. And just like fully again, like neglect the help that was actually being given. And I think that was like, when things started to actually get better was when I started to allow people to come in. I started to listen to people and not shut them out. And if they said something that wasn't beneficial, then I would just like take it and sit with it. And maybe I never use it or maybe I do in the future. And it was one of those things where like I had friends that were helping. I had, um, I know like the first time that I actually spoke to somebody about how much I was struggling was one of my um, like good friends in, in high school. And I still call him like a good friend to this day. And um, he, he was working a lot in like doing mental health advocacy stuff um, from a young age. And like, that was just something that was very, just like, wasn't very well known. Um, and it was something that I, again, like always wanted to be a part of, didn't know how it would kind of look, how it would work, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so like reaching out to him was just a really great opportunity to speak with him. Cause I knew that he kind of would understand and kind of understood the whole concept of everything. Um, but when it, yeah, when it really came down to it, uh, there, it was just like everyone around me truthfully was like doing their best and that's what like helps. And it's like, now those are all the people that I have to thank because I think still, and I think a lot of people will say this, um, that have been through similar things is like, despite if anyone else, like if anyone actually like helped you in that moment and physically did what they did, I think just the fact that they were like in your life is simply enough and is simply like, them helping because it's like in those moments where you're like okay I, i'm struggling a lot but it's like life or death sort of situation what are mm -hmm. we going to do and it's like you don't turn to anything like internally about yourself it's more so like you're thinking about all the people and you're thinking about like what are they all going to think if you like actually took your own life or how upset are people going to be and it's like those are the types of things that you're really thinking about in those moments and it's like, those are also the things that stop you from doing it. It's because it's like, oh my God, like I can't upset my family like that. I can't upset these people like that. And obviously to make a choice and a decision to actually like attempt to take your own life is one of those things where it's like, I'm just like too damaged, too hurt um, to even think about those sorts of things. And that's like my own, obviously my own personal experience because um, everyone's is probably way different, but I would just say everyone in my life really impacted and helped um, in these massive ways. Yeah. So I was going to ask, like, if you don't mind, you know, the last part that you just said there, like you're, you're mm -hmm. thinking about other people, like you're not thinking about yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. So like, what is that? What kept you going for so long? Yeah. A hundred percent. I would like, I would say um, there is, there's actually like two driving forces, I would say. Um, one for sure, obviously the people and like family. I think anytime you have like supportive family, um, people that genuinely care about you, no matter like which way it's shown, uh, what form of role they play in your life. I think like anytime you know that you're cared for and anytime that you know if you're like 
really struggling and you need someone that they would be there. I think like, it's really difficult to ever know that you would upset those types of people or literally like destroy their life and take away like forms of happiness in their life. Um, so that was a huge driving force for me. And also the, the other one, which again, like this sounds super selfish, but I, in those moments, I was just like, you know what, like I have so much that I want to accomplish. And, um, that was just a huge one that always kept me like moving. And I was just like, I want to do more. Like I, I like now is not the time. Like there's more that I have to do. I need to like see this little piece of my life out. And I just like kind of kept going with that, with like that whole scheme of things. And, um, truthfully, like now when I look back on it, I'm like, Oh my God, like, this, the past two years of my life have been the best two years of my life. And I've accomplished more things than I ever thought I could. And it's like, none of that would have happened if like, when I was 20 years old, I would have like taken my own life. And I think that's, again, it's one of those times when you like sit there in the moment. And of course you're thinking about how shitty things are, but you're not thinking about like how great things can be. Um, Yeah. I think is just like huge. Talk about perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. like <clears throat> wow like perspective 100 percent. you know you just said it right there like how how bad things could be or how good things you know like mm-hmm. i wanted to go back really quick because you know we were talking about how people were helping you in your life but then at the same time like you didn't allow them in sometimes and and at, a, and at the very start and you brought up a really good point when people some people help you out like they think they're being helpful But I talk about this all the time where I'm saying be selective with the people that you put in your arsenal for who you really want to, who you take approval from, um, you know, who, who you allow yourself to take criticism and stuff like that from, right? Because you don't want to be the wrong people. And I think also that story that you shared at the very beginning where you said that one of your friends at the time was like texting you, like, I'm going to hurt myself, all that stuff. And I wonder if that, like, I know this goes really into it, but I'm wondering if like that had to do with anything when you were going through it that you like didn't want to text it or worry about like having any people worry about you or anything. Yeah. First and foremost, I want to say that is like the best thing that you can ever say. And I think that's like, you're, you're very, like you nailed it on the ball with uh, taking that into your everyday life and living by that motto, because it's very, very true. And that's, very similar thing that I like based my life off of too. Um, and I, I really do think that, uh, yeah, you kind of like nailed it. There was a lot of times when I, I really like, again, you don't want, and I think this is kind of like a common trend again with some of this stuff is like, you don't ever want to feel like a burden. Um, yeah. you don't want to, to feel like a burden on anyone. And so it's like, I'm not going to reach out to somebody and tell them every last thing that I'm going through because um, I don't want to put them in exactly, as you said, that same situation that I was once in. And that really was like, it was really tough because um, the people that I trusted and the people that I knew that I could trust and the people that I actually would talk to, um, I think I was like chucking way too much onto their plate uh, because I wasn't just like openly talking about it with people. So it was like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to talk to 20 other people about it, but I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to put all those 20 conversations into one and you're going to have to deal with it. And it's like, it's not fair. (laughs) Like that's not fair at all. Um, and so really it's like in with encountering, uh, what I did back when I was like 14, uh, with like my friend is that really did, as you said too, like just stem and, and really just like create this whole new, this whole new, like, I don't even know how to say it, but like approach with, yeah. with seeking help or like talking about my struggles with people and um, obviously not a healthy one. And again, it just like, yeah, just not something that I think like anybody should do. And obviously you don't want to see people do that. Um, but again, it's like, you just feel like a burden if you're, if you're not. And it's, it's the problem. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's why like, like what are some things that help other people that you've either heard from obviously your podcast and then be just in life, your, your life general that 
that can help other people talk to other people without making it feel like a burden or, or from people outside knowing that they, that someone else needs help, but they don't know how to help them. Mm -hmm. So I would say like one of the biggest things uh, that I usually hear and honestly, like what I kind of started to acknowledge for myself too, is like when a struggle like kind of comes up, it's like just openly talking about it. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be like a big deal. Um, Like even if it is a big deal, it's like the conversation itself doesn't have to be a big deal. Um, It's obviously very, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, do you mean like, like you don't have to like sit him down in a room and like make this whole big show about it? Just exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because the the biggest thing um, and literally like one of my missions since day one of like the podcast has been like, I've always said, I just want to like really normalize the topic of mental health. And like, that's been the goal because anytime you do like now it is becoming more normalized, but there's still so many topics. Like if I was to be like, yeah, you know what? Like I've had a lot of like suicidal ideations. And if I said that to like the average person, they'd be like, what the hell? Like, are you serious? You're thinking about killing. And it's like, man, like these are thoughts that like run through people's brains. Like we need to like normalize this. Like, it's not that it should be like taken like super lightly and be like, oh yeah. Like, you know, we all get that. Um, because like, no, like, it's like, of course, like you want to sit there, you want to listen, you want to talk about it. You want to console with them. Um, but it should be a lot easier to talk about these things. And like, especially, 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 especially when it comes down to like anxiety and depression, two super big normalized things nowadays. And like so many people are being very open with it, especially like think about how many times in conversation anxiety comes up it's like, Oh yeah. You know what? Like just having a lot of anxiety lately. Yeah. That's not how it used to be. Like nobody Mm -hmm. would ever really talk about that. Um, A lot of people just say like, I'm really stressed lately. Um, And so there's like, now it's starting to shift in a lot of great ways. And it's like, you know what? Like as easy it is to say like, Oh, I have, yeah, I'm just battling a little bit of anxiety. It's like, why not say that about everything? Why not have these types of conversations with people? And again, as you said, it's like, it's all about who you let in. It's like, you know, that if you're letting in the right people into your life, you're able to actually talk to them about these things. Mm -hmm. Because if it's the right people, then it's like, you should be able to talk about whatever you want to talk about, because you're choosing these people to be in your life. And so I think that again, is like a huge thing as well as like, making sure you have the right people in your life and the people that you do talk to make sure it is the right people. But again, like never allow a feeling and an emotion to really like build up inside of you and, and get you to the point of like, I guess, like going over the edge. Mm -hmm. Um, it's way better just to talk about it as it comes and, and deal with it as it comes because we're, we're all dealing with things we're all going through things and there's no reason to, to hide anything. I think. Yeah, constantly. And I I mean, I think that you hit it right on the head as well saying, you know, I mean, a like, like I was saying too, you got, it's, it's hard though. It's hard to let in the right people. Like, how do you know is the right person? But I also really liked what you said, which don't make a big deal about it. Um, you know, which sounds like a weird thing, but like, it's true. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, have a casual conversation. It doesn't need to be like, <laughs> Hey, Oh, okay. Hey, on Monday, let's sit down for an hour and let's talk (laughs) about this because, you know, it's so true. And it's like, I think it is getting more normal. Um, But I wanted to ask you this now, like, so it's interesting me now, because do you think that, because obviously it is becoming more normalized, right? Mm -hmm. But you could also, also say, also, also say, you could also say (laughs) that it, um, like it it could be too much, right? Like, like, do you think Mm -hmm. like anxiety, like the word anxiety and like depressed and stuff is being used too much too loosely? Do you see that or? I love that. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree. I, uh, like, and even there's so many times where I have to catch myself too, because I'd be like, I'm just super anxious right now. It's like, same. Are are you actually though? Are you actually like that anxious? And, um, I think that really is it is there's so many people that don't either like don't fully understand or like don't know how to associate or disassociate. I don't know. Di- whatever. Separate the two. Yeah, <laughs> and, I- um, so I, I think that's like really tough is because sometimes it's like, you know what, like we, we might say that it's anxiety or that, yeah, you know what, like I struggle with really bad anxiety, but it's like not that at all. And I think that again, um, 
it's one of those things that, as you said, is like, it's becoming a lot more, um, or I guess way more overused and a lot of people just like really, um, sorry, there's a dog barking in the background. That's fine. Just <laughs> me a little bit. Um, no, but I, I really do think that it is becoming like used way too often. Um, especially like something like, yeah, you know what? I've been pretty depressed lately. And it's like, do you know what like depression actually is like the exactly. definition of depression? Because, yeah. um, what you're experiencing is like, maybe a little bit of sadness and, and obviously it's like, no, we need, we need to like, you want to console people that are saying that, but at the same time, it's like, you also need to become like more realistic with things mm -hmm. and actually be like a little bit harder on ourselves. Like sometimes we need to hear the tough love of like, do you like, you don't want to ever say like to somebody that you're not depressed, but it's like, Hey, you yeah. need to actually fully understand like what depression is. And is this what you're experiencing? Cause if not, then like, it's not necessarily a word that you, you should use or should be used. And like, that's not me coming from a place like nobody use depression if you don't yeah, have depression. Yeah. Cause like, but I do think again, it's like, it takes away from the severity that it actually can be. And for some of the people that are talking about their depression and they're actually like really going through the thick of things, um, it can take away from that whole entire, like, ex I, not an experience, but like that whole entire Thing that they are really going through yeah um and especially when they talk to somebody because they might be like yeah you know what i'm suffering with like a lot of depression be like that person might go oh yeah me too like life's been tough lately and it's like no like you don't fully and so i think that's where it becomes very difficult um when we are overusing some of these some of these words and some of these sayings because again you start to normalize it a little too much um yeah. and that it has been like a common thing that I've thought about so much as well is like the more that we normalize it, the less that, or I guess like the less severe that it kind of comes, which is like the goal. It's like this big loop, like yeah. this whole, like a Chinese finger trap. Like, just, no kidding. like <laughs> there's just no way out of it, but um, yeah. yeah, there's really not, you know, it, it is a whole big loop because yeah, you're just sitting here and you're like, look, this is serious. And then, you know, people start using it and they're like, well, hold on. <laughs> it's, it's serious, but it's like, can we like actually get it back to where it was at? And yeah, it's yeah. so hard to control that obviously. And none of us could do, we have to do that collectively. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's an interesting thing, especially with social media. And I mean, it's in music, it's, in, it's everywhere now. Right. So yeah. it is really hard. And I, and for those, for those people that have like those real that go through real things and they're depressed mm -hmm. and and really really anxiety to a medical condition you know it almost discredits them because it, like you said if you have a conversation with another person they're like like hey like i'm i'm coming to you like i'm i'm depressed and they're like oh yeah me too like my car didn't mm -hmm. start like my gat like yeah it's just not the same right yeah. and it's, and like then that person feels bad because they're like, oh well, my stuff is way like <laughs> yeah. deeper. So then they might not want to share that. So yeah, that, that's why yeah. I asked you because it's, oh man, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. But it really is because exactly as you said, it's like yeah, one person might say that they're depressed because the car won't start. Another person might say that they're depressed because I don't know they didn't get the right color phone. The next person might say they're depressed because they actually want to attempt to take their own life. It's like yeah when it's used under one, one word, it's so difficult. Um, and obviously how we're using it as well. And yeah, it is, it's like this, this big loop and it's tough to even like give, um, again, like that's one of the things that I'm struggling with right now is like giving my actual opinion on it because mm. when you start to dissect it and you start to go through it, you're like, what is right and what is wrong here? Yeah. Because like, I don't know. And yeah, it's so tough that would be hard to differentiate too. What is right? What is wrong? You know, cause like yeah. you don't want to discredit somebody else for how they're feeling. And like you said, their feelings are valid and, and true, but it just doesn't mean that it's to that point, that severity. Right. So, mm -hmm. wow. Um, but so, okay. You, you, you mentioned this, your motivation was, you know, like a little bit of people obviously, but now how has it shifted? Right. Because you're, you're more, joyful you're more you know you you got your mission you got you're doing stuff constantly you're doing social media and we'll dive into that too but how is your motivational net like now yeah it uh yeah it's it's super interesting because it definitely is um a lot more like on self so i'm like 
quite self-motivated and, and really trying to like do a lot more things for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time in return, just like naturally, everything that I say I'm doing for myself actually is like to do for other people. It's like yep. to supply, like supply, I don't know, like motivation or advice or whatever for other people. And um, yeah, I, I had a moment um, back when I was in France or Italy, actually. And I was like sitting there and I was like, I really think that um, my whole entire like mission in life and what it will always be is just to like, really just like help other people, however that really looks. And again, it sounds like I'm sitting here just being like, I am the greatest person ever because that's all I want to do. But (laughs) it just like naturally makes me um, the happiest and it makes me want to like do more. And again, it's like, I um, am constantly encountering forms of struggles in my own life. And I'm, I'm a person that's very aware of the things that I'm going through. And so like, when I look at, I don't know, prime example, a little bit of a touchy example, but like, having all of my things stolen. It's like, I look at that example and I, um, obviously most people would be like the worst experience ever. And for me, it's like, yeah, you know what? Like obviously uh, not a fun experience, but also an experience that makes you learn something. And for me, it's like something that I can actually talk to other people about and like use in a, in a whole different form and give this whole different meaning to. And I think like, again, that's one of the, the beauties of it is that now in my everyday life, all I really want to do is, is just like look at new ways to benefit people and help people and obviously like expand myself um, in all these different ways and, and really just like live a life that makes me proud, um, but also like makes a big impact. So I think that's really the way that I go about life nowadays. I like that. And I like how you describe that too, because, <laughs> you know, it's different for everybody, like the term success and um, you know, I, I really like that you said, like making yourself proud and ba- and making an impact. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's huge. I, th- I think we all really want to make an impact, right? I think we all want to like leave this <laughs> world this time and like, mm-hmm. you know, be able to be either remembered and, and yeah, for what we, and it's not even, like you said, it's, it sounds like we're like, oh, we're the, you're the best person in the world. Cause he, all he does is think about <laughs> other people, but I mean, and it's, in a sense it's true too like you're you're serving is what that is i mean that that is exactly what that is you're you're using your talents your benefits your experience that you've been through your journey and you're helping other people go through the stuff that they need to go through i mean there's nothing wrong with that you know and Mm -hmm. you should definitely hold yourself high to that because it's it's a very cool thing to go through and be able to and actually it's unique too because every single person i think is a little bit different obviously you know and Mm -hmm. so it's like I really like advocating and I love using my podcast as like a form of, you know, and, and you're the same way. So yeah. And, and talk about, you know, your experiences and, and like getting your stuff stolen like that, (laughs) that sucks. But at the same time, like you said, like, I always say this, which I'm sure you've heard this, but you can like, you can learn from your past or you can run from it. Right. Like it's, it's Mm -hmm. a, in, in those experiences too, it's just like, you can say, like I've stopped using why me, like, why did this happen mm-hmm. to me? You know, it's just mm-hmm. more of like, okay, what is this trying to teach me? You know, for example, like what happened to me? So I was, I was driving, I got a flat tire on the interstate, right? I was, I was going to mm-hmm. hang out with a friend. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Right. <laughs> and I'm calling my mom, my dad, my everybody, like I'm calling the insurance to see if like, I have like, you know, they can come get me for free. Like, I don't know. Right. <laughs> and, and I was sitting there and it's like hot and whatever. And I was like, I caught myself because I was saying, why, like, why me? Like, I'm trying to do all this different stuff. And I was like, no, no, what is this trying to teach me? So then I was like, well, maybe, and I know this is like, this gets like deep and stuff, but like, this is how it is. So I was like, maybe it's trying to tell me to slow down. Right. Like Mm -hmm. I didn't check if my tire was flat before I left. And like, I was racing, 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 trying to get stuff done and hang out with people, Mm -hmm. whatever. But it's like, no, hold on, slow down. And I waited on that interstate for a tow truck for like three hours. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it did what it needed to do, you know, like, I, so it was a very cool experience, but you know, I, I, I like that a lot. And I'm glad you, you know, understand that too, where it's just like, you can learn from it. And mm-hmm. I think people think we're crazy sometimes because getting your stuff like, yeah, it sucks, but it's like at the same time, okay, well, I sh- you know, like, not that you blame yourself. Like I should have been more careful, but like, no, it's just like, you're learning it just, it happened. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like, what are you going to exactly. really do? Yeah, exactly. And I think even just like kind of feed off that 
um, like one of the biggest things that I was thinking about in that moment was like, uh, it's like, wow, like the ways that I'm responding now are far different than how I would have responded before, which is ultimately just showing the growth that I've made as a person. 100%. And that like for me and same as for you in that situation, as much as it like sucks in, the, in those moments, it's like, wow, okay. Like we have a totally different mindset when it comes to life and how we're living our life. And I think that again, is like just all the, all the more reason to, uh, to feel proud of yourself for sure. Oh, for sure. I, I came across this uh, post today and it was talking about how being happy is hard work. Right. And, and I, I a hundred percent agree with it because, you know, in, in my life and I'm sure in yours now, like people are love, like our positivity, but they're like, there's just no way that you do that constantly. Well, I, I, it is, but it's hard work. We have to train our brains. We're learning constantly. We're going through mm-hmm. these things. We're, we're switching our perspectives on how that we can respond better, you know, and, and it is hard work being negative is easy. Like you can constantly pick apart something. Right. But, but yeah. seeing the good in it, that's, totally a different thing so like when when would you say like that switch for you like really like and obviously probably not like a you know thing I can't even remember mine but like I'm just saying yeah. like definitely switch perspective for that mm-hmm. um it's so tough because yeah like same same as you uh I think I started like going through all these different kind of cycles of um I guess like trial and error and it was more so like life trial and error like just like seeing things come my way I'd respond a certain way like wow that's really not how I should have responded <laughs> let's like yeah. try that again some other time yeah um and that just like really over the course of of time I started to like see things I started to open up my mind a little bit um obviously started to do like all the work on myself like started to obviously like dive into different types of books, podcasts, talk with people, like whatever it was, but like really dive into, into that realm of things. And, um, I always say like, I don't know if this would necessarily be like the answer to the question, but I, um, last year I ended up doing like the 75 hard, like that was like a huge way for me to show myself, like some, some mental resilience essentially. And I was like, I just want to try this. I want to do it, whatever. Um, and I remember being like halfway through it and being able to like sit there. Cause I always really struggled to like sit there with myself and, and be by myself. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting there and I just like realized I was like, I'm my best friend. Like I am like my best friend. And it wasn't in like, Oh my God, I'm so alone. Like I only have myself. It was like, no, like I genuinely love to hang out with myself and I would just take myself everywhere, do everything like with myself. And it was in like those moments where it all really just like switched for me. And I was like, you know what? Like I cherish myself more than anyone else in this whole entire world. And like, I have me and like, that is what like this relationship with myself needs to remain solid. I need to be my best friend. We need to make ourselves proud every day. And I was like, if anyone else comes into my life, um, like friends, spouses, whatever, like that person must compliment my life and must compliment me. And if they, if I ever see anybody take away from me and in the slightest, they are not a part of my life anymore. (laughs) And like, that's like the big thing. Um, and so really it was just like finding that love for myself that really like, changed my whole perspective because I was like I'm never going to let anything or anyone um disrupt like my inner peace and it was like somebody's acting irrational they can act irrational I'm not going to give any time to it because like I just value myself so much that like this is not worth it same as literally like we'll just again use it as example like the stuff stolen thing it was like that just like is not worth like my time to really like give it to it. Like, of course, like I felt negative feelings towards it, but like, I'm not gonna just like disrupt all my inner peace and my happiness and be like, this world sucks. Everything sucks because like it doesn't. And, um, I think that was just like those big shifts is when I really just like found that love for myself. Um, just so cliche, but it's just like, no, but that's huge. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so important because, you know, the same as like along my journey that like, a it was probably about a year and a half ago, whatever it was, but 
that's how I felt too. I realized I was like, wait, like I love being alone. Like it was, it was really fun. And that's like the big, if you can get used to that and being alone, cause it is hard. I mean, I still mm-hmm. remember, and it's still hard to me now sometimes, but like, mm-hmm. it's so important if you can be alone, because like you said, you are your best friend, like get to know yourself the best, like, and that's like the biggest thing you can do. Um, that reminded me of something that you said though, the happiness thing, like everybody adding to you, that is mm-hmm. so important. I think everyone should think like that. And right now I'm reading uh, Will Smith's book and I know he's going through the thick of it right now, but, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'm reading his book and it, and it's really, really, it's a good read. Like, I love it. Um, mm-hmm. and the part, there's a part here at the very end of the book and he talks about how other people's happiness is not your responsibility. Like you can't make other people happy you can make other people smile and laugh and like it was based like i'm doing a really dumb down version because i don't remember it that well but <laughs> but yeah. you can make other people you know feel a type of way but you like you're not responsible for the happiness and i think mm-hmm. it you know which i i believe you know like if you're able to do that add to people right and i and i mm-hmm. think that at some point we should all be able to be by ourselves and like you said like like, I don't need it. Like, well, I guess you didn't say that, but like, I don't need anybody. Like I just like just me mm-hmm. and my best friend and, and be able to do what I want to do and take myself out on, on these dates and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like if someone can add to that, how important, you know, that's just like, yeah. And, and I think everyone should be like that. Cause then I think it'd be easier to add to each other. Right. Like, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. That's honestly exactly how I've looked at it too. And that's really like, cause obviously people are like, Oh, if people don't add to your life, like cut them out, like that sort of thing. Um, And like, for sure, like I agree to a certain standpoint, I think it's like very hard to like fully just like cut somebody out of your life. And it's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I I don't even think it's necessarily like the right thing. Like I'm not saying you need to hang out with the person every day or whatever, but like you also don't need to be like, Hey, screw you. You're no longer in my life ever. Um, Because it's like, what is the point of that? Like that doesn't do anything. Um, But I think like, especially when it comes down to like adding people in, I think what ends up happening is like when you start adding these like amazing people into your life and the people that add to your life, those people that don't add much to your life or that aren't like treating you in a positive way or whatever it is, they kind of just start to filter out. And that's what I've like Mm -hmm. noticed. Um, And I'm not even like saying that in my life, I've had those types of people, but just like, I've noticed that some people have like kind of filtered out of my life as like a whole new abundance of people have filtered in. And it's like, now the people that are in my life is just, it's insane. And the people that I've kept in my life is insane too. And it's just, yeah, you you can't match it. No, I've noticed that too. There's a, there's a a filter happens. Right. And I think like Mm -hmm. the more that you become yourself and get to know yourself, then the faster it happens. Right. And I also saw, I also saw this on, um, I think this was on TikTok um, the other day, and it was talking about how um, the faster that you are more yourself, then the faster you're going to find somebody who, who like is li- like likes yourself. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like that was for like relationships, but like, yeah, just in general, I mean, you're going to find, you're going to start matching the same energy and frequency as other people just naturally. Yeah. Right. And it's going to, yeah. And those other people that don't, that feed off like your energy now are just automatically going to dissipate. Right. Cause they're just mm-hmm. like, you know, but yeah, I mean, you hit it right on the head too. Like you can't just, I think that's what gets a lot of people is like, I mean, the phrase, like you are who you hang around with, like, show me your friends. I'll show you your future. That thing. I really believe in that. But mm-hmm. I also believe that you shouldn't just be like, Hey, no longer helping me. but bye Like you can't <laughs> do that just in general in life. Right. And like, yeah. And I think you hit on this a little bit earlier too. You were talking about how like you don't have to take like things personally. Right. And Mm -hmm. like you don't have, and again, this goes back to like being selective. Like you don't have to take things personally from other people. If they're being rude or whatever to you, if that's just how they are in general, you don't have to be affected by that. Like, right. Cause we Mm -hmm. choose what we put meaning to and how we, and and on words and all that. So yeah, you, you get into that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I want to move, I want to move to your podcast. Cause I want to know how, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like we have a pretty good understanding of how you started it, but mm-hmm. what made you 
kind of choose the podcast because okay so hold on are you on so you're on you have a podcast and then i know you're on social media as well Mm -hmm. um do you do tiktoks do you do all that stuff regularly or kind of what's your yeah so it's been um it's so funny because like i i feel like i've built this whole thing through social media yet i'm a person that's always had this big like form of resent towards social media like i'm a person that is like I wish like social media never existed. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, I love it because I'm like, I just want to share everything with people and yeah. like, allow myself to, again, like impact. Um, but yeah, like I uh, regularly, I guess like Instagram, like I've definitely like kind of like pulled back in a sense from how much I was actually posting previously. Like I was doing like every single day, that sort of thing. But also it's like, life is like as much as it seems like life is so luxurious and so so like easygoing it's like feels like we're never stopped like we never stop moving and um so there'd be like near the end of the day i'm like holy shit like if i want to post a photo like i'm posting it like late at night or early in the morning and and making that work um and then same with like the tiktok thing i mean now my phone has been stolen for like it's been gone literally been phoneless for almost a month now Oh, wow. Um, since it got stolen. So I have So that been, was recently you got everything stolen. So yeah, like it's a shit show. I ended up having <laughs> stuff stolen in Barcelona, which was all of my camera equipment. Um and it was uh like and passport, oh cards, gosh. like cash, everything. Um, so that was like one thing in itself. And then when we arrived in Bali, there was an incident that happened not necessarily allowed to speak on it publicly yet maybe one day Um, and then uh like i don't know it was like four days later or something like that uh like four days into our stay in bali um we were on the motor we were like on a motorbike and we were driving we were driving to see where we wanted to live so we went to two different places and we were going we went to the first place we're leaving uh, or it's called Uluwatu. And then we were going from Uluwatu to Changu where we actually live now. But when we were going to Changu uh, we were driving on one of the like interstate or pat- underpass or something like that. And somebody drove right up next to us, ripped the phone out of Tessa's hands and then ended up. Wow. Off. And wow. Like, oh my god like are you freaking kidding me and then yeah now obviously i've been phoneless um but it's <sighs> it's an experience and i'm like i i at first i was like oh my god i need to replace my phone tomorrow and i was like this is like kind of a, a blessing in disguise <laughs> a little bit yeah i'm like you know what it gives me an opportunity to really like figure out where i want to go what i want to do and a lot of really great things have come from it and um obviously I'm not going to be phoneless forever. Uh, I'm supposed to have a new yeah. phone in like, I think May 8th or something like that. So just a couple of weeks, but yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very much so liking this aspect, but yes, on literally like post the podcast on literally everything. And then also, um, have a, like a YouTube channel that I'm actually going to be like really picking up shortly here and also uh yeah the social media on all ends of it but the tiktok definitely is kind of like the back burner of things for me yeah um which for a lot of people it's like right on the for like forefront but the thing i love about instagram is that it's like my own personal blog where i just post exactly what i'm feeling whenever Mm -hmm. i'm feeling it so yeah yeah. no i appreciate that i mean Mm -hmm. I can't believe like, wow, I didn't know that. that I thought that was like a story <laughs> that we were talking about, like that happened and like, you know, yeah. but wow, that's, uh, that's mm. crazy. Um, <laughs> what, what really drove you, I guess, I, I know we touched on this, but like to, to let other people share and be vulnerable as vulnerable as they are on your podcast. I mean, obviously everything that you've mm. been through, but anything else that kind of. Yeah. My whole, like, even like motto since I started it, um, because when I first thought about it, I was like, yeah, I want to start my own podcast. Um, and I really just want to like share very vulnerable in-depth stories. And immediately I just went to like, okay, like, yeah, like I have a story. Um, so does everyone else. And like, why is my story any more special? And so like, what I really did was, um, I made, uh, 
like my whole purpose and the whole way to actually like get more people on with my podcast right away. It was like, you know what, like I just want to set the standard. And so my whole bit of it was like, you know what, like I want people to come on and I want them to share like these really raw, real in-depth stories of their life, the things that they've gone through so that other people that are going through the same things can see those, hear those, and then actually understand what those people did to get out of that. Um, or what they are doing to get out of that uh, so that they actually have a sense of direction. And so you don't need to go get assessed by a doctor and then go to a psychiatrist or a counselor. Like you can actually listen to a podcast of somebody that's done all of that and really is like speaking on what to do. And maybe that's like the steps that they say to do, or somebody else is like, no, I don't, I didn't go seek counseling. I actually went and did this. And it's like every last person is different. And so um, for me, that's really what the driving force was, was like, I want to share my own story first so that it sets the standard, sets the bar. People yeah. can listen to it, understand that like, I'm not holding back and neither should you. Um, and that's literally what happened. Like from the, my first episode, obviously a lot of people heard it and were like, holy shit, like this is insane. Yeah. And then the next episodes that I started to roll out were exactly that. And of course, like, I also started to understand is that there was a lot of people that would reach out to me and be like, I really want to come on your podcast, but like, oh, I've never like been through that. Or like, I've never been hospitalized for this. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, this is like, that's not even the point. Like, yes, of course. Like these are very like raw, real stories. And, and they're, they're these big, massive stories. Um, but that's not the whole point of it. And so what I started to realize is like, okay, like mental health obviously has all different levels and lengths and, Mm -hmm. What's really important is that we obviously share, um, we share like all different sides of it. So for me, obviously like, yeah, I can share my whole entire story, which is like a pretty intense story. Um, but it's also very important that I share somebody else's story. That's like, just been, I don't know, like we'll say has never encountered depression, but it's solely based on anxiety. And it's like, obviously two different sides of it, but very important that people can hear it because we can like relate to each story, but I think really gaining something from the stories, it's important that you have all different lengths and people of all different, all different lengths too. And yeah, people that come from all different places. I mean, I, I would say you nailed it. Like, I think, I think I, it's unique, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I haven't heard any other podcast out there that, that talks in depth about those stories and is as raw as like you were saying. So mm -hmm. if you guys haven't, I would definitely check out, um, Lucas's podcast because it it is it is very and I and like you said too like I think it could help people you know like I really do think that they could listen to that and and decide what to do from there if they're going through something and it might even help them where they don't even need to take any of the further steps you know exactly what does the podcast what does the podcast really mean to you um that's actually that's a that's just so funny that you're talking about this now uh because. I haven't posted a podcast um, in a little while since before I left for traveling. And there's been so many times along my travels where I've just like sat there and been like, man, like this is what you like love to do. Like mm -hmm. you love the conversations. Like that's like literally what is like people call the kryptonite. Like that's my freaking kryptonite yeah. is like these types of conversations and like the ones that we're having right now because it's, it's just so cool to connect with another human being that's very like-minded and that like knows and understands what you're saying. And okay. you're like, it's very evident that you're being heard. Um, and so in my head lately, I've been like, okay, like all I really want to do is like get back to the podcast scene and like really like roll out a whole new, we'll call it like a whole new season of yeah. struggle, create strength episodes. And one that hopefully just like lasts for the long haul. And so behind the scenes, like that's what I've kind of been working on is, is figuring out how I really want to go about it. Um, very similar, like to what I was already doing, but just like really critiquing things. Um, obviously like trying to come back from it. And like, that's why this is super nice too, is because like, there's a lot of things that I'm learning from you right now. And I'm like, Oh my God, like I got to roll this into the podcast. So you're going to, you're going to yeah. see it, just yourself shine through in, in the podcast <laughs> if you ever listen to it. But um, no, it, okay. it really is uh, a podcast that 
it means like everything because I think it really ties in like my whole mission with all of it into the podcast itself. It's like, I love to speak to people. I love to share my own insight, but at the same time, I love to hear other people's. I love to know that it's actually like making a difference in people's lives. I love to know that like I have the potential to talk to some very amazing, incredible people and people that I never in a million years would think that I would ever talk to. Yeah. Um, and I think that is like one of the most special things about the podcast itself and being able to interview people and being able to do all different forms of things with it. Because again, it can like, it can take you to some beautiful places and it doesn't mean it has to be from a financial standpoint. It doesn't mean it has to be from like this whole like success standpoint. It's just simply like the conversations that you have teaches you so much knowledge. Like I think I literally like, Oh, I don't, I'm not going to say like 99%, but like a large portion of the knowledge that I have today and the way that I think about life from the people I've actually talked to on my podcast, same as probably for you as well. It's like the people you talk to gives you a whole new perspective, basically every single episode, like every episode that you talk. And I think that's like what a lot of people um, may not fully understand about like why we love the podcast so much. And this is me speaking on my own behalf, but like when I talk to somebody and I hear them express their story and I hear them say something that like I, and I learn from it, it's like, I'm learning this firsthand. Like I'm not listening to it on a podcast as like a lot of people do. And of course you learn a lot, but it's like, you're actually being a part of that. Like you're learning this firsthand and you're a part of that. And then obviously it's so special to post it afterwards. Cause it's like, wow, like I know that this is going to help people. And it's same as like the feeling, like, for instance, I know after this, like after this podcast ends and after we get off the call, I'm going to be like, this was freaking awesome. This yep. is the best day ever. And it's like, those are the feelings that you chase and that you want and that you should have in life. And it's like, of course it doesn't have to pay your bills to feel that way. Um, and that's one of the feelings and thoughts that I've been having lately is like, I don't need, like, of course you want the podcast to do as well as it possibly can. Cause yep. you want it to reach as many people as you can. Yep. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like the feeling that you actually get from it like that is what it means to us is yeah. like how you feel like that's all that it's about is like how you feel doing it. And that's literally what should like drive you to do something. And so for me, like, that's what my driving force is, is like that feeling, the feeling that I get. And it's hard because sometimes I forget that feeling that I actually do get if I've stepped away from it for, for a little bit. But even like today was such a, such a great reminder of it of how I actually feel doing podcasts. And obviously it's special that I'm not the one that's directing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's cool. It's cool to, cool to be here. And obviously like, yeah, you, you're doing an amazing job with it. So you should be very <laughs> proud of yourself for that for sure. No, I appreciate that. But I, yeah, no, I, I appreciate you saying all that. And I, and I appreciate you being on too. Like it's, mm-hmm. but no, you hit it's right on the head. Like that feeling that we, that we get, you know, talking to somebody, like you were saying too, the fact that we can learn from somebody else, like just, and have that conversation right there. And like you said, it's firsthand mm-hmm. knowledge. It's not through an mm-hmm. external source or anything like that. And, it, and that's what baffles my mind. Like the, the things that I, I've been pretty consistent with it lately, but I, you know, I had it in the past and I took a break and whatever. And, but yeah, I, um, ever since I started doing it more and more, I'm just like, wow. Like, yeah. It, Cause it, le- like you said, you're going to get off here and we're going to be like, this is, this was like the best conversation ever. And that's mm-hmm. how it should feel. And that's how we should feel all the time. And, and I've been battling that too, trying to like figure out like, of course I want to be paid for this. Right. Like we both do, like, yeah. this is something that we'd love to do, but like at the mm-hmm. end of the day, like no matter what, like I told myself already, like, I'm never going to stop this. Like I want to do this. I want to have conversations mm-hmm. with people, whatever that's going to look like. Right. Like it might change. Mm-hmm but I want to be able to do this for the rest of my life and no matter what. And so, yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal feeling and it's honestly like, you can't even describe it sometimes, you know? And, um, but yeah, I, I love it. And I love that I can like see it through you too. Cause it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's a cool, I was excited for this one because it's like a like-minded, like you said, everything's like-minded, but then the fact that like, we're both conversationalists and we both love talking, it's just like, yeah, wow. <laughs> that's why I just, I just had a feeling. I was like, it's going to be good. Like, I don't even have to worry about it. Cause it's yeah, going to talk constantly. A hundred percent. So I want to dabble really quick on running because mm-hmm. <laughs> you baffle me here. I, <laughs> so you've ran 
you did three runs in 29 days, right? So 30 days, three runs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did the math, which was um, 134 miles, but it was a total of 216 kilometers, right? Mm -hmm. So did, did running, does running help you with obviously mental health? And cause like, I, I love working out. Like that's something that's a big outlet for me. So I figured when yeah. I saw you running, I was like, okay, this has to be tied. But, um, does that really help you? And like, how did you start getting into run? Did you always like running? Like, what? like, tell me about that. Yeah, it's, oh man, it's such a funny story, but I, so after I ended up doing the 75 hard, um, there's like a couple other phases to it. And so once I, finished the 75 hard and was doing the next phase of it. I was like, you know what? I feel like I just need to like one up myself. Like I was like in this huge, like push myself as far as I can possibly go. Obviously um, when you're listening to people and motivational speeches by people like David Goggins and, and all these, uh, these crazy ultra athletes are like Cam Haynes, like all those guys, it um, you start to, obviously like idealize the act of yourself doing similar things. And, yep. and you're like, why can't I be on the similar, similar platform to these people? And of course, one day I was like, okay, screw it. Like, I'm just going to wake up. Haven't ran in a while, but I don't care. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go for a run, try it out, see, see how it is. Um, and so I like went on like an eight kilometer run and I was like, wow, that wasn't so bad. Um, and so, and then I was like, okay, what would, what would like a guy like Goggins do? Like, of course he's going to wake up the next day and do the same thing. So mm -hmm. I was like, I woke up the next morning and I went on a 14 kilometer run and I was like, okay, like getting a couple more kilometers in, like, that's pretty good. Like I was dying, but I was like, this yeah. is, this is nice. And immediately, as soon as I got back, I was like, I was like, I'm not even going to allow myself out of this, but tomorrow I'm running um 20 kilometers i was like i don't care and so and my legs just felt like terrible and whatever say, yeah. but i like <laughs> woke up the next morning and i ended up doing like 23 kilometers and i was like okay like i've proved to myself that i can do this and that's like what is important and of course i wasn't like okay the next day i'm gonna do like 40 kilometers because that yeah. wasn't the case but um at that point i was like okay i actually like really love this and i love seeing myself grow constantly from this and knowing that I can like push myself nonstop. And it's like, it's only me. Like I'm the only person that is stopping myself or making myself go. So it's like, I can stop at any given time. So it's up to myself. And the more that I like, cause you're obviously talking to yourself the whole entire time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so I would be like, okay, like, yeah, I want to, I want to run, I don't know, 10 kilometers today or 12 kilometers today. Um, and I'd get to like kilometer two or three and I'd be like, wow, I'm like pretty tired today. Like I might just cut it shorter, like maybe make it like eight, eight kilometers, seven kilometers. And I immediately in my head, I'm like, no, like that's not where we're going. We're going to actually go further and we'd make it 15 kilometers. And so I just started to like challenge myself like that. And then, yeah, just these ideas started to come in my brain. I was like, I want to run a marathon. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, but I know that I could run a marathon in no time. So I was like, I want to run, um, an ultra marathon. And then I was like, that sounds super cool. And then I was like, no, I want to run a trail ultra marathon. And then that's just like where it really <laughs> took off. And then I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm set on. It was really difficult to actually find one, but I found one that was like, seven hours away from my hometown and uh made it this whole like big ordeal and of course had to involve mental health into it so i called it like uh fifty fifty thousand dollars for 50 kilometers and like didn't come anywhere near the fifty thousand dollars but still raised like i think it was like close to three thousand dollars was um, awesome and so i was like do you know what that's more than enough and um even more so it just was like the whole process was just to show people that like, again, you can like do anything, like you don't have to limit yourself. Um, and the whole aspect of the three run thing happened on an absolute whim. Cause I had the first one planned already booked everything like that. And so that was uh 42 and a half, 
uh, kilometer trail run. Um, which was insane and something I never thought I would be doing. And it was like this yeah. whole big experience and it was amazing. Um, and then I like got back home. I didn't train for a week or I did like one run, like sporadically, whatever. And I ended up like booking a race for October. So it was like a month later or something like that. And I was getting super excited about that, but still was like easing off the training because I'd just come off this run. And this one of my friends called me and he's like, Hey, I just want to ask you about like your training for your ultra marathon because I'm going into this run that I'm about to do uh, in Ontario from like Guelph to Godrich, Ontario. And I was like, Oh, cool. And so we're talking. And at the very end of the call, I was like, Oh man, like I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty jealous of you because I know this is going to be a super cool experience and it's going to like push you so far beyond your limits. Um, and he's like, <clears throat> and, I, oh, and I was like, yeah, I wish I could join you. And he's like, you should. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, you should. And um, he's like, and then he's like, I'll tell you what, if you pay for your flight out, I'll pay for your flight home. And I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, all right, give me like two hours. And so after like two hours came back to him, I was like, yeah, let's do it. I booked my flight in the third hour and in like three days after that, I was in Ontario and we ran 121 kilometers um, from Guelph to Godrich. And that was like the most challenging, most difficult thing I've ever endured in my whole entire life. And really showed me again, like how capable I am of everything. Um, and then I flew back home and four days later I ran my last one, which was, um, the 42 kilometer one, 42 kilometer trail race in, um, my hometown, which was like awesome to be able to finish it in my hometown and, and do that. And, uh, yeah, it was like a big moment of like pride. And I obviously felt like so amazing um after that but that race again like just coming off of that that super long one that race wasn't the prettiest one yeah. to say the least i yeah. like i ended up placing really well actually um in the field which is super surprising to me because i was like i'm gonna suck at this like i'm gonna be <laughs> last um not the case at all um which was super awesome mm -hmm. and i ended up uh yeah, finishing that whole three series thing on a whim and uh, something that obviously like I'll cherish forever. Yeah. And yeah. And now it just has stemmed this whole new idea, all these ideas in my brain, of course. That's good though. I mean, yeah, you account like that's, that's amazing. Like seriously, I mean, mm. you should be proud of that. I mean, and uh, I was going to say with that, like it, I think it'd be surprising to people if they, if they really did, if they push themselves, because like you were talking about in the run, like what resonated with me with that is like, and during that run, we we're like one to two, three, whatever kilometers in, like you were like, mm -hmm. you're like, Oh, I'm tired today. Like whatever, but no, you keep pushing yourself. And we'd be so surprised. And I think David, obviously Goggin talks about this. Goggins talks about this, but like mm -hmm. when you trick your brain and you like say, no, like that's not true. Cause we have this like false perception of like what we really, you know, think we can do whatever mm -hmm. it's it's amazing what we can do and people find that out with running especially because like runners mm -hmm. high stuff like that right mm -hmm. um and working out and the physical aspects for sure i'm not sure about anything mm -hmm. else but i do know that for a fact and i and i and i agree and so yeah it's it's really those moments that show you when to really push yourself and be able to accomplish those things that you can accomplish and i mean look what you did like that is something that well you'll remember forever you know and yeah. So that's, yeah, I applaud you for that. That was awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think everyone, um, again, like it's, it's one of those things to even just like answer the question that you asked at the start as well Is like, I used it a lot for my mental health. Um, but also it's like so important. I think this is one of the things too, is like not, and I, I remember having a friend ask me this question and, um, basically what they asked was like, if you couldn't run, um, how would you be doing? And that was like a big eye-opening thing for me. Cause I was like, Oh my God, like I was really putting, like, if I was encountering something, I just like head out on a run and I would go That's and like question, just run. Man. And 
I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm trying to answer all of the questions that I have and fix all of these problems when I'm on a run. And yes, it's working, but like, what if I couldn't run? And so that's what really opened up my eyes to like, I need to figure out how to, um, to, to deal with certain things that come into my life or certain struggles that I have um, and deal with like myself also at the same time without running and like being able to do it away from running so that running is an experience in its own. And like, of course, I'll have all these ideas that come into my brain. I'll fix all these certain things that need little fixes and critiquing, but it shouldn't be like the answer for something and like using yeah. that something for, for like what you need. Um, because of course, yes, it's great to like release yourself, release feelings, maybe negative emotions, whatever it is. Um, but using it as like the cure is one of the things where it's like, okay, we need to reevaluate. Yeah. Um, and that was a thing that I kind of ran into and, um, was able to obviously work out and fix, which is makes running now a lot more enjoyable because I'm not yeah. thinking about all the shitty things in my life. I'm more so thinking about all the happy things in my life. Yeah. And all the stuff that you've been accomplishing. Yeah. Cause you're not using it as kind of like a, I don't know if muse is the right word, but like, yeah, you're not using it as like that yeah. thing. Yeah. That's important. I I've, you bring light to that. Cause I, I never really thought about that before. And like that essence of like, yeah, you shouldn't use and rely on that one thing to like mm -hmm. be an escape, right? Like it feels great, but it like, yeah, figure out how to battle that and combat that. Mm -hmm. Well, wow, Lucas, we are at the end portion, but that, I mean, we had such a great conversation. Um, and I, I really, I hold value to everything that you say and that you talk about, because I, I think that you've, shown that you've been through it and you um, have totally switched your life around and you're doing amazing things now and still, and still plan to do amazing things. So I just wanted to ask you if you wanted to add anything else to that. Um, other than that, well, I'll ask the three end questions, three big questions. Yeah, no, I think the only thing I would have to add to that is just, again, just uh, another thank you. Um, and obviously again, another bit of like an applaud to you for, <laughs> for, for what you're doing. And obviously like, even just like allowing me to, to speak and share my story. Cause again, it's like, I think it's so important. And that's one of the things that kind of gets pushed under the rug as well is like, obviously it's one thing to, to look at somebody's story and, and people might like look at my story and listen to my story and be like, wow, like so cool having Lucas on the podcast, but it's like, you're the one that made this happen. Like this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for you. So I think that's like a big thing that like you should applaud yourself for is because um, whatever comes to this, if this podcast helps anyone, um, then I think like you're, you're really the one to, to thank for it because I'm just, you're sharing, sharing my story, <laughs> but you're the one that made it happen. So. No, I, I, I thank you for saying that. And I, and I really, truly appreciate that. And it's interesting that you bring that up because really quick too, is I've been through this. Um, it's been really weird. These like this whole past month because I've had people reach out to who I've had on my podcast and say, this was a great episode, blah, 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 blah. And I'm so thankful for that, but no mm -hmm. one has, you know, done that. Now I'm getting more, um, cause I also said that I think in a podcast, but like now I'm getting <laughs> more, um, appreciation for it and stuff. And, and it, you know, I like, I don't, we don't do it for that. Right. Like that's not something mm -hmm. we do it for, but it obviously feels very nice. And so, I no, I appreciate you saying that, but I thought it was funny because of the 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 stuff that's been happening right now in my life. I'm just yeah. like, it's really interesting how that works <laughs> out. But yeah, and I and I want you to keep doing what you're doing, and I I can't wait for your new um new season, like your stuff to come back mm -hmm. out, and definitely gonna be listening to that. And um, I'll have all your stuff in the description below. I appreciate too. it. So yeah, heck yeah. All right, well, you ready for the questions? I'm ready. All right. I feel like you're going to do, you're going to nail these because, all right. All right. Number one, what is a daily habit that has changed your life? Uh, oh man, daily habit. That's changed my life. Yeah. I'm a different type of person when it comes to this. Cause I'm constantly changing them, but okay. I would personally say, um, waking up earlier, I think is like a massive one. Uh, it's something I've always loved to do. And now have like continued doing it. And um, I just feel like it really does like add, it almost feels like it adds this whole new section into your life oh, because yeah. it just, for me anyways, that's just like my number one thing that I would like push on to anyone. And if I could, 
I always say this, but I'm like, I would never sleep. Like if that was an option, yeah. like would never sleep um, and just like use as much of the day as possible. But uh, by waking up really, it kind of feels like you are really maximizing your day um, and you never like really feel guilty. And it's like, you can take your morning super slow or you can go really fast. It doesn't matter, um, yeah, I, but you're going to accomplish a lot. So, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Waking up early, it, it, it feels like it adds like a whole different section of your day. Like mm-hmm. you're just adding like four more hours and it's so weird because you'll be done with either a run or whatever it is and shower mm-hmm. and eat and all stuff. And it's like 9am or 10am. Yeah. You're like, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great answer. Yeah. Number two, how would you consider your purpose in life right now? Uh, I guess like similar thing to, to which it always is, which is ultimately just like, um, I guess I don't know how to like fully wrap this up in like one yeah. sentence form of thing, but I would almost say like um, really like making a large impact on other people's lives based on my own life experiences. Yeah. I think that's like a pretty well, pretty way. Oh my God. English <laughs> pretty, pretty good way to way to put it, I think. Um, but yeah, ultimately just like, really helping people and helping normalize the topic of mental health again, uh, through my own life experiences. I agree. I can't remember. I can't recall right now, but there was something that you said, um, mid podcast. And I thought that was like a pretty good staple of like Mm -hmm. your, yeah, your mission. Your yeah. So I love that one. All right. Number three, which by the way, I think that you're accomplishing that. Like I really do. I think that you're, yeah, you're really digging in and doing it. Number three, what's something you know that you wish other people understood? Oh, that's okay. This is a good question. Um, yeah. uh, all right. Okay. Okay. I got to like think <laughs> yeah, about yeah, this yeah. because I, yeah. I like, I have it in my brain, but I'm like, I want to like say Articulate it, it well, Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I think it's like, just by like going to a place where you think it's going to be perfect um, or like doing the perfect thing or the, the thing that you've like always kind of like dreamt of or something like that. It's not going to be like perfect unless you, um, how did I even like word this? Unless you are like fulfilled within. Um, Cause I think like that's a big thing. And like, we've had so many conversations about that here is like, we're in this place. And if you look at it from a blunt, like the outside perspective, it's like, dude, like you're living in Bali. Like you were living a dream freaking life. Yeah. And it feels like for the majority of the time that we've been here, it's been like, okay, like we got to like figure ourselves out here. Like I want to like get back onto a form of a routine. I want to like make myself better in this aspect. And it's like a lot of like self critiquing. And it's like, most people would be like, dude, well, why are you not on the beach drinking coconuts and like having like beers going out to the bars? Like, why are you not doing that stuff? And it's like, this is the thing is like, when you, when you're in these, like in this state, or when you have like a certain mission or a certain goal, it's like, you're going to be constantly thinking about these things. Yeah. So it's like, of course, like if you have problems or struggles, or you have these things that you want to accomplish, like, it's not just going to magically come true or magically appear because you're in a totally different place in the world and because you put yourself in that situation like when I first imagined traveling and first imagined like coming to Bali even I was like oh my god like this is going to change everything for me and it's like I'm still encountering the exact same life it's not like you step into a whole brand new life um maybe for some people I don't know but uh I think like the biggest thing that I know which some other people don't is like um, you really, oh, how do I word this? Oh, this is going to frustrate me now. And I'm going to look back <laughs> on this and be like, Oh my God, I absolutely butchered this. I, but I, um, I think you're doing a great job. I <laughs> really quick, just like, I don't want to lose your train of thought or yes. anything, but like, I think, I think what you're hitting on too is expectation, like having your expectations, right. You know, yes. cause I think that's kind of what I, what I was getting out of that, but I, I still exactly. think you're doing a great job. <laughs> no, I know it, it really is kind of like a sense of expectation too. Like, obviously um, it usually is just like what you, what you do expect and what you think is going to come of it. It's like, it's actually like up to you to make that happen. Um, and it, it doesn't matter how perfect the scene is, how perfect your situation is. It's like, 
it's really comes down to you and like yeah. you're the one that has to make it happen. Um, and you are the one that does make it happen just because you set yourself in Bali. It doesn't mean that automatically your whole entire life is going to become this big glamorous movie production scene. And you're going to be yeah. a travel influencer for the rest of your whole entire life. Um, cause think about how many people filter in and out of Bali every single day. Yeah. And it's like, you gotta, you gotta think that if you really want something, it starts from within. Um, and I know like same for my podcast, same for your podcast. Mm -hmm. It's like, of course, like you could go drop yourself into some big fancy studio and make it this whole entire production, but it's like, it doesn't mean people are going to come to your podcast. It no. doesn't mean anybody's going to, anybody's going to listen at, listen there's, to it. There's gotta be meaning behind it for. And exactly. Order, yeah. Yeah. And so it really, again, it just like comes down to, to figuring out what you want and, um, what you want to do with it and it doesn't matter where you are but like anything's possible from any place so i think that's kind of one of my big pieces yeah there's two things there one you bring you bring the great out of everything that you're surrounded by and right like i think that like mm -hmm. that's what you're hitting on to and mm -hmm. uh what was the second one no <laughs> now i forgot um but yeah it i mean i agree like just what a very well thought out like it's true it's just like you're self-discovery right that's like mm -hmm. the most important if you can do that you discover yourself you you learn more about yourself then you're going to be able to surround yourself with the with more like-minded people and mm -hmm. bring the great out of every situation that you're in and all of that i mean look look at all the light that you made out of having everything including your phone stolen you know like mm -hmm. camera i mean and that you know you could argue like that's your life like creating content right so it's just like yeah. all of that was taken away from you and mm -hmm. yeah so a lot of life lessons there but yeah. thank you lucas i really appreciate you coming on and of course wow I, yeah. yeah i'm very appreciative of you having me and obviously us having this whole big conversation and um again i think it's even just like so important and so nice just to be able to like think in these forms of ways and obviously like feeding off of the things that you say and, and you feeding off the things that i say yeah i think it's just such a such a cool powerful conversation which is awesome i agree i agree all mm -hmm. right well thank you so much of course